am Hannah Kim, and I am the Deputy Chief of the Queen's District Attorney's Frauds Bureau. I want to welcome everyone to Queen's District Attorney Melinda Katz's 2023 Frauds and Scams Awareness and Prevention Webinar. Tonight's webinar will consist of a presentation by the DA's Frauds Bureau, followed by a presentation by Con Edison. The final portion of the program will be a question and answer session. Before getting into the program, I'd like to start with an introduction of our hosts for this evening. First, I'd like to introduce our Queens District Attorney. Born and raised in Queens, District Attorney Katz has been a public servant for almost 30 years. In 1994, she was elected to the New York State Assembly where she wrote and passed crucial legislation protecting New York's most vulnerable. As a member of the New York City Council from 2002 to 2009, District Attorney Katz served as chair of the Influential Land Use Committee. Upon being elected as the 19th Borough President of Queens in 2013, she worked to seal certain misdemeanor and nonviolent felony convictions and to grant warm forgiveness so that those communities most vulnerable to the effects of mass incarceration would also have the opportunity for second chances. Since 2019, and despite unique challenges caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, District Attorney Katz has implemented meaningful changes in the criminal justice system while ensuring the 2.2 million plus people who live, work, and visit this borough remain safe. District Attorney Katz has diligently restructured the office of the district attorney with the following bureaus now in place, major economic crimes, hate crimes, human trafficking, frauds, violent criminal enterprises, housing and worker protection, as well as a cold case unit and a crime strategies and intelligence unit. She has also hired specialists in the fields of immigration and forensic sciences. Among her accomplishments uh, are the creation of a conviction integrity unit to restore justice to the wrongfully convicted, another Queen's first, an enhanced community partnerships division to strengthen ties to the communities that compromise the most diverse county in America and a reinforced rehabilitation programs and restorative services bureau to better identify opportunities for diversion and alternative sentencing for low level offenses. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Queens District Attorney, Melinda Katz. Panda, one of the first things we need to do is shorten that bio, but I appreciate um, all that uh, you said. I also wanna just shout out if I can, for everybody that's joining this call, I want you to know that the elected officials that are here are remarkable. We run into each other at all of the community events and the issue of scams and the issue of protecting our constituents comes up every single time, whether it's, uh, you know, someone asking about uh, a call they got from the electric company, which wasn't really Con Edison, or whether it was about National Grid or someone who knew uh, the bill that they had in gas and they weren't sure how they knew that. Uh, Assembly member Jennifer Rajkumar who, by the way, with all the budget stuff that's going on, I want to thank her wholeheartedly for taking the time out of the crucial negotiations for being here. Council Member Linda Lee, this is probably our third Zoom together uh, today, if I had to uh, take a count, always working. Uh, Sandra Ung and I were out last night uh, talking about uh, the law and talking about uh, changes um, that are happening all across the state of New York. I want to thank her for her work. Lynn Shulman, who there's not a day that doesn't go by where Lynn is talking to me about someone uh, in, the, uh, in her council district. Uh, and I want to thank her for the accuracy. Uh, you know, I ran into Richard David of Con Edison on the street one day or at an event one day. And we started talking about scams and, and things that we could do together. And I made it clear to him that I was shocked when I get phone calls from individuals who say to me, I am calling from your electric company. Your bill last month was $122.84. Um, I think we can give you a, a good deal. Um, and, you know, as your electric company, we're very concerned about your bills. Well, first of all, I know I use Con Edison. I know I use National Grid of the gas company. 
I know I use Fios or Spectrum or whatever I use. So I knew that it wasn't my company. But what shocks me is the amount of information these individuals have. And they get it by uh, calling the house, asking for, you know, Terry Smith, who's my wife. And, you know, you say, oh, by the way, my wife's not Terry. My wife's name is Jane. Is that who you want to speak to? I go, thank you, I'll call back. Then they call and ask for your son and they have the wrong name. By the time they call you with your electric code they have, they only have so much information that it's quite possible in your mind that you think that they're actually the company that they're trying to intimate to you that they are. Scams are all over the place. I want to thank Hannah Kim and Darren Wilkes for the work that they do uh, in, in educating the constituency about scams. Um, one of the things, you know, they're going to talk to you about grandparents scams and those individuals that call and pretend to be your grandchildren uh, and asking for money so they can go uh, see a judge. They're going to talk to you a little bit about the Queen's DA scam, which is, you know, this is Queen's DA, Melinda Katz's office. You are under investigation. For $10,000, we'll consider your investigation closed in full. I will tell you, we will never ask you for money, ever. Please don't fall for it. Don't buy it. My best advice that I give to every community group, don't give anybody any money. It's not... You know, it's not a hard thing to pick. Don't give anybody any money. Trust but verify. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention before I turn it over to uh, the other elected officials and Anna is uh, deed fraud. Deed fraud is a huge issue in Queenstown. People coming back from their home after a month or two uh, and all of a sudden their houses are being renovated. Uh, people whose deeds are being stolen. And it's, you know, it's not hard. It's not easy to steal uh, someone, someone pretending to be your child goes into a lawyer, someone pretending to be a relative goes in, gets a mortgage on your property without you even realizing it. We need to be able to show you how to avoid your deed getting stolen. And Hannah and Darren are going to talk a little bit about that. But I can tell you, take care of your property. If you have bills that you don't know and you don't know where it came from, it's a good that your identity. So please watch out for that as well. Um, deed fraud has become a growing industry and a growing niche in this borough. Um, people have stolen people's houses for generations. We are very good at going to find those individuals and investigating those. For now, I'm just going to thank Con Edison for co-sponsoring this. Thank the elected officials for all of their advocacy. Thank Hannah and Darren for going out to the different community events uh, and educating. So to the electeds on the call and to the not-for-profits that are on this call, my team will go out and talk to the senior centers, talk in schools, uh, talk in civic associations, uh, and educate people on the scams that are out there. Thank you for joining us today. And Hannah, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, DA Katz. Joining the district attorney in hosting tonight's webinar are a number of dynamic elected officials who have taken up the cause of informing and protecting their constituents against scams and frauds. First, we have assembly member of our borough's 38th district, Jennifer Rosh Kumar. Good evening. I'm New York State Assemblywoman Jennifer Raj Kumar, and I would like to thank our District Attorney, Melinda Katz, who is dynamic and nonstop. I don't know when she sleeps, uh, but I want to thank her so much for spearheading this very, very important webinar. And what the DA said is exactly right. People lost nearly $8.8 .8 billion to scams, and that was in the year 2022 alone. And fraud of all kinds is on the rise, from identity theft to romance scams to bank scams. And the fraudsters are only getting smarter. So on this important webinar, you are going to learn how to protect yourself. You do not have to be a victim. You may have received emails and texts phishing for your bank information. I know I have. Fraudsters may use your credit card to buy things. And there are certain charity scams award and lottery scams. There are even romance scams where someone becomes your online 
uh, or in-person boyfriend or girlfriend and then convinces you to give them money. There's also deed theft where a scammer steals your identity and takes out a mortgage in your name. And as the DA mentioned, grand grandparent scam has been on the rise where a grandparent gets a fake email or a call from a grandchild saying they need money wired to them. And even worse, and this is unbelievable, now you can use new artificial intelligence to create a sample of someone's voice and generate an audio that sounds like them talking. So that is now being used in fraud. In the state capital in Albany, I have been working to help pass laws to increase penalties for fraud um, and to make sure consumers are warned about possible fraud. So again, I'd like to thank our district attorney and all of the incredible uh, sponsors of this event, which includes some of my favorite elected officials, uh, the really the best of the best. Um, and um, I'm looking forward to a wonderful program today. Thank you so much. Next, we have the council member serving the 23rd district, Linda Lee. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for um, having me be part of this event. Thank you to our DA and also your staff, Darren and Hannah, for putting this together, as well as our co-sponsor, Richard David, who we love, um, you know, longtime community leader, and of course, our colleagues in government. Um, and as, you know, has already been mentioned, um, I just wanted to highlight that when I was working at my um, nonprofit previously, we saw all sorts of scams coming in and it was ridiculous. And it's to the point where, you know, as, as Assemblywoman Rush Kumar just said, they've gotten so sophisticated and they've gotten so advanced. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, we're not able to catch up. And so these types of events are extremely important so that we can get the word out to our community members and our constituents about what some of the concerns are. And so um, I just want to thank all of you for partnering on this because we have to make sure that People are not taking advantage of our seniors, of our immigrant communities, of um, people like myself as well, because there's a lot of things that come in the mail that look more and more real. I don't know about this romance scan. I'm very curious to learn about that, but <laughs> it's crazy. They've gotten so sophisticated. So um, thank you so much for hosting this event, um, uh, DA. And uh, you know, I look forward to hearing about um, all the things that we need to look out for and that will help our constituents. So thank you. Also co-hosting tonight's webinar is the council member serving the 29th district, Lynn Schulman. Thank you very much. I, I wanna thank um, District Attorney Katz uh, for putting this together. And I also wanna say that I'm very proud that she's one of my constituents here in the 29th district, which covers Forest Hills, Rigo Park, Kew Gardens and Richmond Hill. And um, we get, not there are tons of scams. Uh, the 29th district has one of the um, highest number of older adults of any of the city council districts. And we get complaints in our office constantly about all kinds of things. And I also get, I also receive emails for, what, from what looks like my bank saying, there's a problem with your account. Please, please send us this, e please link and in, go into this link and all of that. By the way, I also want to add to what um, uh, Assemblywoman Rajkumar said, there's now something called spoofing. Somebody can spoof somebody's phone number. And you will get a phone number from a, from a familiar phone number, but it's not your number because somebody actually took it over. And that's scary. Somebody can just download an app and do that. So I'm really looking forward to this. I want to thank all of my wonderful colleagues on here. And uh, I, I hope we're getting a good budget, uh, <laughs> Assemblywoman. Uh, and uh, as you know, again, I want to thank the DA staff as well and Richard David, who's a who's an amazing community leader and somebody who also I love working with in uh, in Queens. So thank you. Next, we have the council member serving the twentieth district, Sandra Ung. Hi, I'm City Councilwoman Sandra Ong, representing District 20. I really want to thank DA Katz for your leadership in this issue. I want to thank all my colleagues and different levels of government for co-hosting this event, along with Con Ed, all the not-for-profits here. You know, it really is sad. I also have a district that has a very um, a high amount of seniors. And it's very sad when they come to our office and they tell us they have been scammed. And my only advice now left is that if anybody has any questions about you have an email, you got a letter, 
Um, before you give away any of your personal information, I really welcome you to just contact the office. We're always happy to look over the letters or emails or a text for you. And so, so important before you give away your birthday, your social security number, your address to really think about. Another, and so something else I want to add, also in my district, there's a lot of um, trucks and booths out there that gives away free, um, they said there's a free iPad, you're going to get a free phone if you sign up with us. I really would also encourage everyone to be careful of that because once you give away information you can never get it back and you know a lot of these um you know free stuff they're giving away are not real so i really again um thank all my partners um in government uh for today and i look forward to the presentation thank you at this time the district attorney's fraud bureau will be presenting their um, presentation of identifying scams and how to avo avoid being a victim As part of District Attorney Katz's Frauds Bureau, um, I have with me Darren Wilkes, who is our elder fraud coordinator. And at the end of the Anna, session- I'm so sorry to interrupt. Do you wanna just switch the uh, the view just so we see the full screen, not the notes? Just display uh, settings. Mm -hmm. You should be able to see that, I'm sorry. There we go. That's good? Okay. Um, at the end of the session and also after Con Edison has presented, um, we will be taking uh, questions and answers that's relevant to today's topic of frauds and how to avoid being a victim of a scam. To highlight how big of a problem this is and also how pervasive it is, I will go over some revealing numbers. Last year alone, there were 2.4 million reports of fraud these are just the number of people who reported them, so the actual number is substantially higher. There are many people who are victims of scams who do not report that they are for various reasons, especially in the case of romance scams or investment scams. Victims are sometimes too embarrassed to come forward, or sometimes they are in denial that they were the victim of a scam. These scams have resulted in the financial loss of $8.8 .8 billion. Most of this loss was due to the top five frauds we have identified. Imposter scams, which includes the grandparent scams that were mentioned, romance scams, business and government impersonators where they pretend to be from the government or a legitimate business when in fact they're not. Online shopping scams, lottery sweepstakes, investment scams, and others. One unfortunate, unfortunate result of these scams is that the victims rarely get their money back. The money is often sent overseas where it cannot be located or it is quickly spent. Everyday fraudsters are finding new ways to adapt to changing technologies to exploit unsuspecting victims. And every year we are seeing an increase in the number of people who report being the victim of a scam. This is why outreach and education webinars like this are tools that we can use to prevent fraudsters from preying on their victims. I'm just going to skip over some, some slides for uh, time reasons, but as you can see here in this fraud category um, graph, um, imposter scams in New York State was the number one fraud, with a report of over 30 thousand reports in 2022 alone. We will be going over several of these scams in the top 10 category, especially the imposter scams during this presentation, and also give you tips on how you could avoid being a victim. What I also want to highlight is that all those statistics show that people in their 30s are most likely to be the victim of a scam. People over the age of 60 tend to lose the most money. 
elderly, elderly, elderly victims often do not report. So it is very important for people in that age group to be especially educated on ways in which to avoid being a victim of a scam. Although some fraudsters will target the elderly for particular scams, as we will discuss later, fraudsters do not discriminate. They will target anyone in any age group. In some scams in the form of identity theft, I've seen fraudsters stealing the identities of babies and small children. Scammers will do whatever they can to steal your money. So what methods do fraudsters use to contact their victims? Texting is the number one way in which scammers will contact you, followed closely by phone calls. Unfortunately, as wonderful as technology can be, it comes with its problems. It makes it easier for scammers to victimize people. Scammers will often manipulate the caller ID on the phone so that it appears that you are receiving a legitimate text or phone call. For instance, if they're pretending to be from the federal government, they can easily manipulate the phone so that it shows they're calling from a 202 area code, which is the Washington DC area code. The caller can manipulate caller ID so that it appears that your bank, in, your bank is calling you when it in fact is a scammer. Sadly, the lesson here is that there are so many people looking to commit scams that you have to be careful no matter how you are being contacted. So I wanna start by going over one of our more difficult imposter scams that we get reported to us, romance scams. When I say difficult, I mean, there's two reasons. One, emotionally, because as a prosecutor, it's often very difficult to hear a victim tell you that they got taken in by a scammer simply because they were looking for love or friendship. And it's also difficult investigative-wise because these scammers are often located overseas. But as you can see here in 2002, there were $1.3 lost financially due to romance scams. So this is definitely a big problem. In a romance scam, the scammer will randomly reach out to you via text, for instance, or match with you on a dating profile. Or sometimes they might reach out to you via Facebook or Instagram. They will strike up a relationship and start to show a very strong and unnatural interest in you. The relationship will move very quickly and intensely. At some point, they will ask you for money. It could be a small amount in the beginning, let's say $300, and they say that they will pay you back. And in these instances, they will pay you back. Um, that's to build trust in you. After they have built some trust with you, the amounts will start to increase, however. Suddenly, they need tens of thousands of dollars. Perhaps they got into an accident and needed the money to pay for their hospital bill. They will present you with various scenarios, but one thing in common is that they need your money urgently. They pressure you to make a decision very quickly and pull on your heartstrings. And you do it by giving them money. But as soon as you do, the scammer will disappear with your money. And in some instances that we have seen with a person's life savings. In many other cases, we have seen these scammers after having developed a relationship with their victim, give them investment advice, which ultimately leads to the victim losing substantial amounts of money. Many people from varying backgrounds fall prey to these scams. And as you can see on the slide again, um, billions of over $1.3 billion have been lost from romance scams alone. So how can you spot a romance scam and present yourself from becoming a victim? One thing that we always see in the DA's office is that the scammer can never meet you in person or video chat with you. Perhaps they say that they are in the military or working overseas. So one of the things that you should be looking out for is the person that you're chatting with. Are they refusing to meet you? Are they putting off video chatting with you? That should immediately be a red flag to you that this is uh, probably a romance scam. Is this relationship moving very fast? Speed is key because the scammer fears that you will research them 
or talk to your family or friends about them who may convince you that this is a scam. Does the scammer, the person that you're speaking to, do they provide information but never really any specifics about themselves? Do they ask you a lot of personal details, um, seem overly interested in you, especially when it comes to your finances? Do they ask for money? These are all red flags and signs that this is a scam and that the person you are dealing with is a scammer. There are some ways you can protect yourself so that you do not become a victim. If they send you a picture, for instance, do a reverse image search online. Often the scammer will get a photograph off of the internet or a real person's public profile and pass them off as themselves. Don't hesitate to ask detailed and specific questions about them. If they're not real and they begin to suspect that you are catching on to them, then they will likely disappear before any harm is actually done. Never send money to someone you met in these ways and speak to your family and friends. Maybe they will tell you that this is not a natural situation. Cryptocurrency scams, um, some of the ways in which scammers steal your money um, in cases like romance scams as well is through cryptocurrency scams. This is often the format in which we see victims of romance, friendship scams, lose their money, but we also see this quite significantly in investment scams. In these cases, the, the scammer will ask you questions about your life, your money, job, retirement, and then tell you that they were able to retire or live a life of luxury by trading in cryptocurrency. They will then quote unquote teach you how to invest or trade and will direct you to open your own account on an exchange and it instructs you to deposit your money from your bank account. In the initial stages, you might actually even see a return on your investment, but they do so that you invest more and trust them. After the scammer tells you how to purchase crypto, they will then direct you to transfer your assets into a special account for a better investment. This, this special account, however, is in fact controlled by the scammer. Ultimately, when you decide that you're ready to cash out, you will find out that you're unable to because suddenly you need to pay these odds taxes and fees in order to do so. When you contact the scammer for help, it is then that the scammer disappears with all of your money. And this has become such a problem that since the start of 2021, there has been a reported loss of $1 billion alone from cryptocurrency scams. So in addition to avoid being a victim of a romance scam, what can you do to avoid being a victim of a cryptocurrency scam? Here are some tips as you can see on the slide. One, never give anyone access to your private key, seed, phrase, or wallet. Only purchase from reputable exchanges and avoid transfers to unknown wallets. And with anything else, research before investing. You should always do your due diligence to see if you uh, always do your due diligence when you are investing any of your money. Be wary if the scammer promises you a matching investment or a big payout. That should be a big red flag. A common thread that we see in investment scams is that the scammer will always promise you a higher rate of return than is available in regulated markets. They will also claim that you will sustain little or no risk by investing. So if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably because it is, and you are probably a victim of a scam. So as always, you must do your own independent research. Research the person that you are communicating with. Research the investment. Research the company. Do what you can to protect yourself. Um, in real estate scams, there are a variety of these kinds of scams, but the common thread is that they use real estate as a cover to steal your money. Again, as with anything else, do your due diligence and research the person or company. Only work with lenders that you know and trust. 
and only work with qualified professionals. If it's a real estate deal, make sure that the broker that you are using or working with is a licensed broker. Make sure the property that they are selling or that you're seeking to buy is real and the pictures that you get sent to you are accurate. All of this can be done online with quick searches. Also make sure that you have all the necessary paperwork before a deal is made, before you sign anything, before you give any money away. If someone refuses to do, the, do this, this is a huge red flag as well. Some scammers will promise to send you over proper documentation like a deed only after you have sent money up front. This is not normal or proper business practice. Scammers will often also create a sense of urgency and make you feel as if you don't act now, you will lose out on an amazing deal or an opportunity. So they pressure you to act fast and send money fast. So with respect to defraud specifically, as District Attorney Katz mentioned, um, there are ways in which you can protect yourself to see if you are a victim of defraud. You can check online using the ACRIS search engine, which is A-C-R-I-S, to see if there are any irregularities with your deed. Some other signs to see if you're possibly a victim of deed fraud is, are your bills suddenly missing in the mail? Has your credit score taken an unusual hit? Are you getting mail in someone else's name? If so, you, it is possible that you are a victim of deed fraud. If you feel like you might be, again, um, check ACRIS to see if there's are, there are any irregularities with your deed, and if there are, report it immediately to your local police precincts, or of course, you can always report it to the district attorney's office. Now, this was mentioned several times, um, the grandparent scam. I'm sorry for the light. Um, as district attorney said, you have to trust but verify, and you can prevent yourself from being a victim of a grandparent scam. But let me tell you a little bit about what it is, so you know if you so you know if this ever happens to you. So unfortunately, um, our grandparents are a common victor victim to imposter scams. One of them is what we call the jail bail scams. In these scams, someone pretending to be your grandchild will call saying that you, they need you to give them cash immediately because they got arrested and are in jail or they're in the hospital and they need to pay right away. Often someone pretending to be your fake grandchild's attorney or a bail bondsman calls to convince you of the legitimacy of the situation. There is also always a sense of urgency of when they need your money and they know how to pull at your heartstrings because what grandparent doesn't want to help out their grandchild. So how can you avoid being a victim of this kind of scam? It's actually fairly simple. Call your grandchild. Are they actually in trouble? Do they actually call you? If you can't get a hold of your grandchild, then call your child. Again, is your grandchild actually in trouble? These are very simple actions that can save you from being a victim. Again, verify, verify, verify. Additionally, District Attorney Katz um, had mentioned that um, our office will never call or solicit anyone for money. So if you get a call like that, trust that it's not a legitimate call and report it to our office immediately. Um, it was also briefly mentioned about email and phishing scams. Unfortunately, everyone gets spam email. It's estimated that almost half of all the email that you get is in fact spam. And these scams are costing us $3.5 billion annually in losses. I get spam all the time and it can be very confusing to figure out what is real and what is a scam. Many of these emails look real and from companies that you even do business with. They will ask you to update your information. So you have to click on a link that's in the email or they say that your account has been compromised or you need to confirm a recent order, all of which gets you to a link that they want you to click on. Sometimes the email appears to be from the government like the IRS and it's telling you that you have a bill and you need to click on that link to view that bill. Do not click on these links. 
Okay, these links come with it a malware that will attack your computer and steal your personal information. So what can you do so that you're not a victim of an email or a phishing scam? Do your research. Often these emails ask you to click on a link, reach out to the company after you have independently obtained their contact information or actually go into your account to see what's going on. Verify, take the few minutes out of your day to protect yourself. These very simple steps can help you um, from being a victim. Another scam that we see quite a bit are phone scams. We've received an uptick of complaints from victims claiming that someone representing the government has called them, threatening to put them in jail for various crimes, and that if you do not pay them right away, you will be immediately arrested. Often this fake government agent demands a wire, trans a wire transfer, cryptocurrency. They tell you that someone from the government is gonna go to your house to pick up cash, or they ask you to go out and get, get gift cards. And then you're gonna have to take photos of the front and back of the gift cards and text it to that person that you're speaking to. As with District Attorney Katz's office, the government will not call you um, making these threats and demanding money from you. That's just not how the government works. The government will never demand that you go out and buy seven gift cards and tell you to take pictures of the front and backs and text it to them. They will also not threaten you and tell you don't tell anyone. The government will not do this. So if you get any call such as this, um, make sure you report this immediately to your local precinct. Do not send them any money. Um, do, uh, do not go out and buy gift cards. If you or a family member or anyone that you know receives such a call, again, notify this, notify your local precinct and report them right away. Do not send any money. In the lottery sweepstakes inheritance scams, these also have a very common thread that you are about to come into a lot of money but in order to get that money, you need to first pay them in the form of fees or taxes, et cetera. Sometimes they say that they will deposit this winnings or these winnings to you directly into your bank account and therefore demand that you give them your bank account information. Of course, do not do any of that. So how do you know if this is a scam? Okay, well, first, did you play the lottery or enter a sweepstakes? If you didn't, but someone tells you that you won one, it's a scam. Do you have to pay to get the prize, such as taxes, shipping and handling fees, processing fees? If so, it's a scam. No legitimate lottery will require you to do so. Did you have to give over your bank or credit information in order to obtain the winnings? If so, it's likely a scam. And also, did you have to give personal information? All these are signs that this is a scam. The only time you have to pay for anything is the actual state lottery when you buy the lotto ticket. Anything else is a scam. We've also gotten a lot of calls regarding fake check advanced uh, fee scams. These scams became a lot more common during the pandemic due to the increase of work from home job opportunities. Um, these scammers will advertise these jobs, especially remotely, and for instance, they'll ask you to purchase supplies for your job and say that they will pay you back after you have purchased the items. This fake company will send you a check and in the meantime tell you that they sent more than they should have and ask that you send them a check for the remaining amount. You do so and your check clears, but when you deposit their check, it bounces. That was because it was a fake check from a fake company. So not only are you out of money that you sent to them, you are now financially responsible for this bounce check. If you are encountering a job where they are asking you to pay them for the job, please realize that it's likely a scam. So what can you do to avoid being in this position? Do a search online of the company and use the keyword scam and complaint. 
And if you see a combination of words such as that, you're probably being scammed and the company is not legitimate. Talk to a family member or a friend, get their opinion on whether they think this job is, is legitimate. And if you have to pay the job in order to get the job, as I mentioned to you before, it's likely a scam. Also, a legitimate employer will never ask you to deposit a check and ask you to send it back, especially in the form of gift cards or electronic transfers, which we've seen quite a bit of. So if you see any of those signs, please realize that you're probably being scammed and don't send them the money. Do not send them your personal information, especially your bank account information. Um, the next thing that we've seen, especially with our elder fraud unit, is home health aid family member theft. Um, the takeaways that I would suggest to you is be careful of having a joint account holder. Because if they take money from the account, it's not a crime because legally they are entitled to that money. If you need help with your finances or paying bills, we would not recommend having a joint account with someone, but instead obtaining a very limited power of attorney that is specific and please pick someone that you trust implicitly. Regularly review what the POA does and immediately revoke their power of attorney. Um, if you see any irregularities or you feel uncomfortable, revoke it and contact an attorney. Whatever the case may be or whatever you choose to do, whether you decide to uh, have a joint account with someone or not, do not feel pressured or rushed to sign these documents. Take your time reviewing them and speak to an attorney if need be. Um, Darren, I don't know if at this juncture um, you want to add anything to that because I know you have a lot of experience with this. Oh, yes. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, I think some... Some bank accounts, some banks will um, have different types of accounts. If you need somebody, if you need uh, help paying your bills, you may have a uh, another person that has some powers to write checks up to a certain amount or to ac access the account in certain ways, but does not have full access to the account. So I would say talk to your bank and find out what options and security features are available um, because banks are you know, trying to respond to some of these issues and they do have um, certain accounts or security features that may be of help to you. Um, I think you mentioned the difference of uh, the powers of attorney, uh, whether it's a limited or general, um, you know, most people just sign a general power of attorney, giving everyone, giving the person uh, full powers uh, to act as you. Uh, but there is a limited power of attorney. So um, that's something that you can really discuss with a verified attorney and find out what works best for you. Thanks, Darren. And again, if there are any questions at the end of the session, um, you can input that in the, the chat box. I'm just gonna move forward um, because of the time. Um, identity theft um, has been a major problem for many years now. Um, identity theft is the theft of your personal information such as your name, date of birth, social security number, bank account information, credit card number, passwords, anything that is specific to you. And scammers will steal your identity for a wide variety of reasons for a number of nefarious purposes. We saw a lot of that during the pandemic. Scammers were stealing the identities of people to get benefits that they did not deserve or were not eligible for. Um, so another thing that you might need to look out for, is, especially we've seen recently, if you get documents in the mail that you did not expect to get, but it has your name on it, such as a DMV license or a state ID card, credit cards in your name that you did not request, new bank accounts that you did not request, or you suddenly now the proud owner of a car that you never purchased or never leased. You receive a congratulatory letter from a cell phone company or parking summonses for a vehicle you never own, but it gets sent to you. Um, 
immediately contact the source and ask them why they were sending this to you. Call that bank and tell them, I never opened up a bank account. It's very likely that someone's using your identity to obtain these documents. Do not ignore these letters, especially if it comes from a bank or a lending institution for a loan that you never applied for. Um, if you find that you are a victim of identity theft, immediately report it to your local police precinct. Um, one other thing is if you're suddenly missing mail, contact the postal inspector at the U.S. Post Office. Someone may be stealing your mail for the purposes of um, stealing your identity. So if you see any of those kinds of issues, do not hesitate, avoid being a victim and report it immediately. So here are some recommendations that we have for you so you do not become a victim of a scam, some of which we already discussed in the presentation. So I'm just gonna hit the ones that I feel like um, I really would like people to take away from today's seminar. Um, Never send money, especially to a person you do not know. If someone like someone from a government or a business is asking for a payment in the form of gift cards, realize that it's likely a scam. Never give anyone access to your bank account information or your personal information. And as we just mentioned, as Darren mentioned, be cautious about joint account holdings. Um, discuss the options of limited versus uh, general power of attorneys. Never sign a document that you haven't had the time to read um, and take the time to tell the person, I want time to look over these documents, discuss it with a loved one, go over everything. A lot of times people just quickly just sign because they don't want to inconvenience the person. Don't do that. Take the time to go over everything before you put your name on anything. With respect to emails, do not click on attachments or links unless you are 100% sure you, knew, you know who sent them to you. Um, one of the things that I do is I shred my documents before I throw them out because your mail probably has a lot of sensitive information that scammers are eager to get. Use strong passwords and do not share them with anyone. And another thing is check your monthly bank and credit statements and also check your credit for any irregularities. The three main uh, credit companies allow you um, free credit checks once each year from each credit agency. It's free. You just have to go onto their website and get a quick credit check. Do so. Be diligent with the people that you are speaking to and always verify. If you feel like you've been a victim or you need help, um, please don't hesitate to contact the Queens District Attorney's Office. We have a consumer fraud hotline and the Elder Fraud Unit, which is um, run by Darren Wilkes and um, our Section Chief Anna Dow. Contact your local police precinct, contact the FBI or the FTC, FTC. But when in doubt, you can always come to us and ask for help. Darren, I don't know if you had any last minute um, suggestions here. Um, no, thank you. you. You had mentioned about checking your, your statements and everything. Um, if you do feel like you're the victim of some type of uh, identity theft or bank, bank fraud, I would say also make sure you file a police report because a lot of times the banks will require a police report in order to open up a fraud investigation. So that's usually the first step if you believe you have any kind of fraud, fraudulent transactions on your bank account. So that's, um, that's very important in those situations. Thank you, Darren. So that concludes the DA's Office Fraud Spear presentation. Um, at this time, I will be introducing uh, Con Edison. Con Edison is one of the nation's largest and most reliable energy companies serving 3.5 million customers. In Queens, Con Edison delivers electric and gas service, and we are proud that Queens continues to have the largest adoption of solar energy in our entire service territory, which includes all five boroughs in Westchester County. This year, Con Edison is celebrating 200 years, and they are proud to be a global leader in the clean energy transition as they are looking to power, looking to powering the future of this great city. Daniel Jung is a senior specialist in customer outreach and education. He has been with Con Ed for 13 years and is a Queens native, proudly residing in Bayside. 
Mr. Jump. Thank you so much, Hannah. And uh, thank you everyone, uh, the DA's office, all the elected officials, as well as all the constituents for being here today. Um, Hannah went a little bit over our history. We have a long history uh, in New York and that actually makes scammers use our name more than anybody else. Because if you really think about it, I have Verizon, you might have T-Mobile, this person might have Sprint. What's one bill that we all have in common? It would be Con Edison, right? You're a car warranty, I might not have a car, but guess what? I probably do have a Con Edison bill. And with that, uh, today I will be showing uh, some of the things that we've seen at, here at Con Edison, some of the scams that we are coming across and that our customers are coming across. Give me a quick moment, let me share my screen. Okay, um, I hope everyone could uh, see my screen. All right, so the first type of scams that we are uh, witnessing more and more of are website and email scams. As Hannah went over, uh, about 50% of the emails that we're getting are all spam emails. We've seen everything. We've seen comed.com, uh, con ed with the E being a three, con ed where the Instead of a O, it's a zero. We've seen all of that. And so please, please be careful. If you see any, if you're suspicious about any email from Con Edison, do not open any links. If anything, delete it and give us a call. And you could uh, figure out with us exactly what that email was about. Also, please know that there's only three places you can make a payment online for your Con Edison bill. Everything else is fake. We've seen so many um, fake bills floating around. And in those fake bills, there's specific websites and numbers you could call where it goes to the scammer's website. It goes to the scammer's automated phone system. And then they take all your money through that. One thing that I wanna mention on this is a common way somebody could get all of your Con Edison information is just by stealing your mail. If they steal your mail, if you are still getting your Con Edison bills via mail, all a scammer needs to do is wait one day, boom, take your bill, and now they have your entire bill. And with that information, they could create fake bills. They could call you, know your information, and start uh, building that trust with you. Oh, this is Con Edison calling me. They have my account number, right? So another scam that we see a lot is door-to-door -door scams. Now, this is a little bit more scarier because now it's face-to-face. -face. Please, when someone comes to your door and claims that they're Con Edison, ask for credentials. It's not rude, it's safe. You could call us at 1-800-752-6633 on the bottom, and there's a special uh, number that you press that's an uh, employee check. Literally, it's an employee check where we will check that employee for you. A lot of you may have come across people that come to your door, hey, we're from Con Edison. I have a special rate for you. Oh, did you know you're not getting the full discounts that you can from us? If they're doing that, that's probably an energy service company. They're trying to get you to get the supply portion of your bill via them. All they need is your name and your Con Edison account number to enroll you. So if they do come to your door, ask them, for paperwork, ask them to send paperwork if they're so confident about their rate. Be diligent and of course, do your due diligence in regards to that. Now, one of the initiatives that Con Edison has right now is our gas service line inspections. We are required by New York state law to perform these gas service line inspections. If anybody comes to your door chances are it's one of these inspectors slash mechanics. Now, how do you recognize our employees? Well, first things first, 
we will readily prove our identity. And furthermore, we wear our photo IDs. When we're out in public, a Con Edison employee must wear their photo ID on their neck. And uh, just a quick picture, a Con Edison employee, chances are they will look a lot like this. They would either have this, they might have the blue overalls, and most importantly, you would see our logos. And everyone, if we are doing work at your property, I guarantee you that Con Edison employee did not walk there from wherever, you're gonna see their truck, you're gonna see a van, you're gonna see some sort of Con Edison marked uh, you know, uh, transportation. Also, our employees, when they're doing work like this, they must wear boots. If somebody is wearing the latest Air Maxes or wearing slippers or something along those lines, they are not Con Edison. We're wearing cotton, we're wearing mostly blue, and you will be able to see our ID. And of course, if you're not sure, give us a call. We will be happy to identify that employee for you. That employee would be more than happy to wait. It's not being rude. It's being safe. And lastly, we are seeing a lot of phone scams. Uh, Hannah went over this a lot. They are using spoofing um, equipment. Now, what spoofing equipment is, is when they call you, what you see is our public phone number, our 1-800-75-CON-ED, or our 212 public number, all available on Google. All you have to do is search it. And by the way, those phone numbers are incoming line only. They don't make outgoing calls. So that's how you know it 100% it is a fake person. But they could do that. They could make you think Con Edison is calling you because your phone is saying Con Edison is calling you. Please be careful. Uh, a lot of grandma, grandpa scams went around. It's the same for Con Edison. We've seen customers get scammed because somebody calls them, go, hey, we're shutting your business off. We're shutting your account off within one hour because you didn't pay. Well, first things first, ladies and gentlemen, even if you didn't pay us, it takes a while for it to get to a uh, moment where, and we would be sending you notices, letting you know that there's a default in payment or there's an arrears. It's not gonna happen where we just show up or call out of nowhere and just threaten you and that we're gonna turn you off within an hour or so. We do not do that. A lot of these scammers, again, demand immediate payment. That's to confuse you. That's to get that rush, that, that scared, rush and then now you're willing to you know trust them because they're telling you that they're going to solve the problem that you have right now they're going to solve it for grandpa grandma scams especially a good piece of advice especially if you're the grandson or you're the child call your mom call your grandma uh, or granddad and create a safe word a lot of uh, good a good safe word might be your favorite dish from your grandma, right? And always start the conversation with that, with them. So now your grandma and grandpa are now, uh, you know, they're conditioned to starting a conversation about their favorite, about their grandchild's favorite dish every time before a phone call. So that's a great way. Always keep a lookout. We never accept anything uh, via prepaid gift card, debit card, cash apps, Venmo, Zelle, PayPal, cryptocurrency, nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, these scammers are your best friend until they get your money. They're your best friend. We had a customer who the scammer set up a cryptocurrency account in their name, linking their bank account to that. All together, that's a three-hour process with multiple back and forth uh, messages coming from tax, messages coming from there, all handled by that person who was the sweetest person until they got the person's money. Then they're gone like the wind. So please, ladies and gentlemen, uh, be safe. 
again, spoofing. If, if you don't expect a call, chances are it's not for you. We will not threaten to your, turn your electricity off or gas off without showing any type of an identification or plenty of notification prior to. We wouldn't never demand immediate payment uh, via prepaid debit card, gift card, cash app, or Bitcoin. No payments for smart meters. We've seen that too. People charging for a free smart meter. It would, like these scammers, they'll do anything. And of course, we will not request any payment for a gas service line inspection. I've seen mail go out going, hey, Con Edison is, uh, is required uh, by New York State to do a service line inspection. We are the contractor of Con Edison and we will do your service line inspection for you. Call us to make up an appointment. No, it's absolutely free. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't stress this enough. Your money is precious, especially in today's economy. Make sure it stays in your wallet and not a scammer. And just a final thing, I just wanna quickly just show everybody, and I think this is actually very, very important. I just go to Google and I put create fake con ed bill and look at all these links. Look at all these links. If you just click on a link, you get a form, right? I could just get the form. Please give me a moment. It's taking a little bit longer, but okay. So ladies and gentlemen, now I have a utility template that I could play with. I could put any amount I want here. I could change all of this. I could change all of this. I could put all my information here, right? Where you, you can make your payment. And ladies and gentlemen, we get rid of one, three more pop-up. You get rid of one, three more pop-up. So it's, it's a losing battle on that sense. Uh, please, please, everybody, uh, stay careful. Make sure, if you're not sure, to give us a call. 1-800-75-CON-ED. Please give us a call if you're not sure. Uh, if any of the constituents here uh, would like me to go to your civic uh, association, you could always give me a call. You could uh, give me a ring, uh, my contact information. I'm pretty sure Dan Brown, everybody here has it. So uh, with that, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Daniel, and all the members of the Con Edison team who have joined us this evening. That was a very illuminating presentation. At this time, we will, um, we are very short on time, so we'll just be answering one or two quick questions um, that have already popped up. Um, one question that we got is, from an anonymous attendee, let's say you've been contacted by a scammer and you know what's going on, instead of just hanging up, is there any kind of tactic that we can use to confound them, to fight back, to make their life difficult? The answer is do not engage with them. Uh, this will literally lead to nowhere and it's just a waste of time. Just hang up the phone, um, block them if you get a text send it into your junk and block them. We would recommend never engaging with a scammer. Um, there's a question also, I've seen also with chat with IRS, it goes to another portal asking for $1 to get your question answered. Is there any way to close the site? I, we're not familiar with that site, but thank you for bringing it to our attention and um, we will look into this. Um, because we have actually gone over um, the allotted time, I'm going to conclude tonight's webinar. I want to thank, as always, District Attorney Melinda Katz, as well as the elected officials who helped make this event possible, Assembly Member Jennifer Raj Kumar, Council Member Linda Lee, Council Member Lynn Schulman, and Council Member Sandra Ung. I also want to extend a special thank you to the people at Con Edison, especially Daniel Jung for taking part in this event. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, we hope you have a lovely evening.